His Spirit. Let this time be a time of a relationship with you. Enable us through the songs that we sing. Inspire us with the words that will be read and meditations accordingly. This morning especially, God, we thank you for the end life among us. As they preside over singing, skit and choreography, let them realize the grace in abundance from you. We keep this time at your feet, hoping and realizing that you will guide us through. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand and sing multilingual eight.
adoration of our Trinitarian God, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High, blessed is he. Holy are you, O God. Holy are you, O Almighty. Holy are you, O Immortal. O Lord, our Redeemer, who was crucified for us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Kindly be seated, let us confess our shortcomings to our God. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I have I am no longer worthy to be called your son. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As seated, let us examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our shortcomings to the Almighty God. Let us all say the first prayer of confession together. Almighty and most
I have always walked in your way and have never strayed from it. Reveal your wonderful love and save me. At your side, I am safe from my enemies. From the attacks of the wicked, deadly enemies surround me. They are around me now wherever I turn, watching for a chance to pull me down. Come Lord, oppose my enemies and defeat them. Save me from the wicked by your sword. Let us all say this together. Glory be to the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. be seated. We will have a special English number from our young people.
Genesis chapter 39 verses beginning from 1 to 23. Genesis 39 verses beginning from 1. This Old Testament reading is chosen from the book of Genesis chapter 39 verses beginning from 1 to 23. I repeat, Genesis chapter 39 verses beginning from 1 to 23. Now the Israelites had taken Joseph to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar, one of the king's officers, who was the captain of the palace guard. The Lord was with Joseph and made him successful. He lived in the house of the Egyptian master, who was the Lord, who, who was, the Lord was with Joseph and had made him successful in everything he did. Potiphar was pleased with him and made him personal servant. So he put him in charge of his house and everything he owned. From then on, because of Joseph, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptians and everything that he had in the house and in his field. Potiphar handed over everything he had to take care of Joseph and did not concern himself anything except the food he ate. Joseph was well built and good looking and after a while his master's wife began to desire Joseph and asked him to go to bed with her. He refused and said to her, Look, my master has done, does not have anything concerned himself with in the house because I am here. He has put me in charge of everything he has. I have as much as authority in the house as he has, and he has not kept back anything from me except you. How then I could do such an immoral thing and sin against God? Although she asked Joseph day after day, he would not go to bed with her. But one day, when Joseph went into the house to do his work, none of the house servants were there. She caught him by his robe and said, Come to bed with me. But he escaped and ran outside, leaving his robe in his hand. When she saw that he left the robe and ran out of the house, she called to the house servants and said, Look at this. This Hebrew that my husband brought to this house is insulting us. He came into my room and tried to rape me, but I screamed as loud as I could. When he heard my scream, he ran outside leaving his robe beside me. She kept, the robe, she kept his robe with her until Joseph's master came. Then she told him the same story that the Hebrew slave that you brought here came into my room and insulted me. But when I screamed, he ran outside leaving his robe beside me. Joseph's master was furious and had Joseph arrested and put him in the prison where the king's prisoners were kept. And there he stayed. But the Lord was with Joseph and blessed him. So the jailer was pleased with him. He put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and made him responsible for everything was done in the prison. The jailer did not have to look after anything for which Joseph was responsible because the Lord was with Joseph and made him successful in everything he did. The second reading will be read to us in Tamil. Not sharing for the deep, your prayer, Paranama Nihara, Masananga, Mundra Tungi, Padimantu Bereki. Hebrews chapter 12, verses speaking from 1 to 11. <laughs> So this episode reading is chosen from Hebrews chapter 12, verses from 1 to 11. Aviyar, make up Kondra, Ittanai Piralana, Sarchigal, Namai Sundu Kondirka, Baramana Yavachayum, Namai Suchi, Neringi, Pavatayum, Tandi Vitte, Visuvasate to Vakakiravarum, Murikiravarama Yukira, Aesuvai no keep. Namaka Niamit Tirikira Otatil, Puruma Yodu Oda Kadavo. Our Tamakum waited in the Sandoshatin Puritil, Avamanatha Yenama, Silvay Sadikil, Devanadi Sangasanathan, Varatha Parasitil, Vitirikida. Avaya, Ningal, Ilapulavar Kalai, Ungal, Atamakal, So in the Pogada Padikil, Tamaka Viro the Mai, Pavikara Sariya Patta, Ilpitamana. Our 
Amen. 
Thank you, God, for the words that were read to us. In faith we believe, meaning to life and wisdom emerges out of your word. Inspire us through these words and encourage us to think life and life alone. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Indeed, I am extremely happy to be among you, a place where I was born and grown. Before I intend to meditate on the theme and the words that were read to us, the theme being young people in search of meaningful life this is not only a theme that uh, young people among us should think about rather it is also a theme that has been throughout human history uh, the most important one all of us as humans have uh, differently reacted co-opted to life and the ultimate uh, purpose of life is to derive meaning from various experiences before we could uh, meditate on the words uh, I would like to thank uh, your dear Ayama, my very close friend and my batchmate Reverend Tabitha and also the pastorate committee which joins her in ministering to all of you and definitely all the elders seated uh, here before me, uh, most of them um, know me as Badu. <clears throat> this is also a time where I'm not able to forgo the memory of Tedis. <clears throat> there were three important people, as you all know, who encouraged all of us with music. One is Sam Uncle, the other one is my own dad, Ebi uncle, as you all called him. Years they ministered to us through music, Sam uncle and my dad. But if I have to confess the contribution of Dennis, he took the music of this church to another level. And I miss him this morning. But I take courage in Christ, whom we believe to be the only strength to hold upon at times like these. 
Uh, once Viktor Frankl, one of the Holocaust survivor, went on to address this question, what is meaning of life? While addressing the question, what is uh, the meaning of life? He founded a new dimension in uh, psychoanalysis. And he called it logotherapy. And this is what he has to say. Ultimately, man should ask what the meaning of his life is but rather must recognize that it is he who is asked in a word each man is questioned by life and he can only answer to life by answering to his own life to life we can only respond by being responsible Viktor Frankl is insisting on this last word which is responsible to life he can only respond by being responsible which means he was saying in a context where the world governance imagined life in terms with war Viktor Frankl was saying human beings are called to be responsible after two continuous world wars the context of wars and conflict when uh, the governance of the world thought that it is only through competing with each other life and meaning of life can be derived here is this man who underwent the deep suffering in the first world war and the second world war and he says if somebody has to respond to life they have to respond to their own life forget thinking about me contributing to your life and you contributing to some other's life each and everybody are called to be responsible to our own lives In a way, Viktor Frankl was also challenging the idea of Nazi, Hitler. The second uh, story that I wanted to share with you is uh, the story of uh, a teacher and a group of students. Margaret Mead was uh, one of a very, very well-known anthropologist. Who is an anthropologist? Somebody who thinks about human life, the beginning of human life, how humans have evolved over time. Margaret Mead ha uh, has her own uh, uh, serious contribution in this field. When uh, her students were asked, teacher, tell us, when did human civilization begin? When did human civilization begin? Margaret Mead did not say it is in the finding of the wheel that human civilization began or in finding of uh, clothes, attires nor she uh, didn't say anything like uh, cooking utensils or hunting weapons she said in my finding i saw a grave where the thigh bone had a trace of being broken the femur bone had broken at some point and it had healed so she went on to say it is not in the infrastructural development that human civilization began but when the bone broke, I'm very sure there were people who surrounded this particular person and engaged in compassion and healing of this broken bone. In a way, Margaret Mead went on to say, the beginning of human civilization is in the context of people coming together and contributing to each other's healing. 
thirdly i am saying three things before i intend to meditate upon the verses that were read to us basically because i want to read these three portions in this light the third is biblical to the question of what is meaning to life bible the ancient literature ancient book recognizes two ways of addressing life one in the context of slavery people came together and they came together recognizing godlessness among them and they also came together to realize god in the context of slavery and experience freedom life and meaning to life in the bible is imagined from slavery to freedom we see jewish history where the jewish community is not only enslaved once they are enslaved many times and in every context of human slavery god comes as a liberating god a god who vouches only human freedom the second is a lot more profound the oldest book in the bible is job the wisdom of job is extremely clear before job could undergo the deep suffering job's suffering is immense unimaginable i have only lost my parents we have lost denny boy i don't see yogna sim uncle i don't see a lot of seniors among us but however job's suffering is a lot more intense his own children are no more his own servants are no more his worldly material wealth is no more his own wife comes rebukes him and leaves him his friends come and torture him with all sorts of wisdom but however before job's suffering there is an amazing scene of god on one hand and the anti god on the other hand communicating with each other god is in conversation with the evil one forget us we don't even uh, speak to whom we think are our enemies here the correspondent of life the bringer the harbinger of life is in conversation with the evil one and the outcome is job's suffering you see the depth of job's suffering bible in a way also tells us meaning of life should be derived from the struggle between good and bad is there anybody here who is absolutely good one of the psalm says uh, god is seeing from heavens the entire humanity and god says i don't see anyone on earth who is worthy of life so meaning of life has to be derived in the context of our own struggles between good and bad if i say my way of life is the only way then i am extremely wrong if you insist upon your own life and tell this is how young people should live no absolutely wrong and if young people think that your way of life is the only way of life you are absolutely wrong all of us have called to life by life to struggle in life and in the course of the struggle we find meaning dear friends let us go to the first uh, lesson that was led to read to us uh, genesis chapter 
39. This is uh, the famous story of uh, Joseph. Huh? All of us know this story, right? What are the two things that come to your memory when you think about Joseph? Pesinga, Matadi. Huh? Ma? Brothers were jealous. Yeah, is there jealousy in this church? Is there jealousy in this world? Yes, there is Tolunga. Ama, yes. We have to acknowledge that we are all struggling with jealousy. Okay. What is the other episode? What is the other episode? Temptation. Oh, he becomes a leader. So three things. His own brothers envy him. Second is the temptation. Potiphar's wife calling him to bed. The third, he, become the, he becoming the leader. I'll give you a new picture of Joseph. And my way of looking at Joseph is this, his own struggle in between good and bad. In chapter 37, Genesis chapter 37, Joseph's story begins. And Joseph's story begins in a way where Joseph's father is gifting him a robe for being his favorite. And it is the robe that is envied by the brothers. The brothers come together, plot. They actually intend to kill him. But uh, one of the brothers says, no, 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 let us not kill. Let us sell this fellow. Fit for nothing fellow. Huh? Fit for nothing fellow. Like most of you will think of uh, some young people today. Fit for nothing fellows. What happens next? The fit for nothing fellow goes to Egypt. Sold there. There he is a servant. Potiphar's life, uh, wife likes him. He overcomes the temptation. Right? But before this story and overcoming the temptation... In chapter 38, we have Thomas' story coming in. Why should Thomas' story come in between Joseph's life? 37, Joseph's story begins. 39 is Joseph's temptation story. 38 is about Thomas. The focus is the garment. Garment was put on him. Later, garment was torn. In chapter 38, we see again garment. Tamar wearing a garment, achieving what she has to achieve through her father-in-law and again she changes another garment and she goes away. And in verse, in chapter 30, uh, 39, Joseph is caught in the confines of Potiphar's wife and we have Joseph's clothes again on Potiphar's lap. Clothes contribute to jo uh, Joseph's slavery. He is in the prison. Okay. And somehow in all of this, the word of God says God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph. We might think that uh, we are undergoing suffering and this person is like that, that person is like that. But trust me, God is with everybody. As much as you think God is with you, God is with everybody. In all their struggles. Later what we see. Uh, he finds good name with the king. And he becomes a leader. Like Kiran told. My good old friend. But Joseph's story does not end there. When he became a leader. That is where the question of. How he contributes to life comes. In chapter 47. We see a very different Joseph. Uh, if somebody reads chapter 47 verses 13 till 21 and especially 20 and 21 it is not the king of Egypt who thinks about enslaving Israelites it is Joseph who plots in the context of famine and he is the one who inaugurates slavery Joseph in his highest power did not contribute to life, but he contributed to slavery. Now you tell me you want your children to be like Joseph? 
Yes, I want my son to grow up like Joseph. Ask me why. Basically because the word of God says, in all of this, in all his ups and downs, God was with Joseph. Joseph was not born a good man and he did not die as a good man. But however, the point is, in between the birth and death, Joseph grappled with life. Joseph grappled with life. He struggled in life. That is the point. The first thing that I want to tell the young people of David Memorial Church, I don't see um, some of the main uh, fellows. They've gone to get ready. This is the problem with the young people. You don't take word of God seriously. Your focus is something else. <laughs> However, the lesson is coming to you strong. God is with you. You better realize that. People might undermine your struggles. But God does not undermine your struggles. God is with you. But however, how do you relate with God? Only when you read stories like this. Not pick stories here and there. Sunday school, you can't read it. You can't read it. Second is, Hebrews chapter 12. Verses beginning uh, from 1 till 11. But however, the focus is mostly on verse 2. The focus is mostly on verse 2. But however, chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, with this great cloud of witness, whoever the gospel, uh, whoever the uh, writer of the epistle is, this particular book, he is saying there is this great cloud of witness. Great cloud of witness. And in chapter 11, we see. Who are these great clouds that dwelt among us? We see Adam, we see Abel, we see Enoch, we see Abraham, we see Sarah, we see Moses, before that Noah. You have this great history of great mothers and fathers. Right? But the writer of this epistle says that is not enough. Basically because this particular church is in Jerusalem and a lot of Jews have become Christians and they are gra grappling with their own history which is so lengthy and so profound. But then their struggle is whether I should be called as the son of Abraham or should I be called children of Christ. All of us have. I come from a certain family and I'm extremely proud about it. <laughs> I come from a certain place and I'm extremely proud about it. I speak a certain language and I'm extremely proud about it. I have such and such an education background and I'm extremely proud about it. And I earn so much and I'm extremely proud about it. And I own so much and I'm extremely proud about it. But however, the epistle writer is reminding his church, do not be confused. If you go back to Abraham, your life is limited. Because the verse says, uh, uh, somebody read chapter 11, 38 and 39 and 40. The world was not worthy of them. Hmm. The wandered hmm. Uh, see, look at our own history. Abraham, Moses, all of them, they wandered. They wandered. And they dwelled in caves and on mountains. Go ahead, 39. These were all command, commended for their sake. Ah. Yet none of them received what had been. They lived an exemplary life of faith. But, what does the verse say? They did not receive what was promised. They did not receive. Moses did not receive. Moses did not see Canaan. Abraham's in a promise. What was his promise? You will have your ancestry like 
the grains of the sand and stars on the sky. How many children did he have? At what age? However, all these great men and women you think have lived an exemplary life, but however, they have failed to realize God's promise. Now you, when you get back to your own history and when you claim your own ancestry, na innar, innar, I belong to such and such, it is of absolute waste. If there is life, if there has to be witness to life, there is only one, that is Christ and Christ alone. Why? Chapter 2, uh, chapter 12, verse 2. Somebody read verse 2. Sandoshatai Puritti Avamanatai Yenade Yenamal Silvay Sagite Nandrima Silvay Sagite. Who is Jesus? He was not somebody who said no to suffering, but he said no to, uh, to some sort of worldly happiness. Shiluvayai Sumandi. He bore the cross. This is the cloud of witness that you as church should remind yourselves and be corrected. We can't live like Christ definitely but however the ethic of Christ is only this. The ethic of Jesus is only this. The son of man when he lived on this world did he have a home to live? Right from his childbirth, he didn't even have a place to lay his head. That is the experience of the one who redeemed you and me. And we call him our savior. So what are we behind our own ancestries, with our own wealth, with our own transition in life from one level to another level? People of God and especially young people, don't think of accumulating educational and material wealth. Think of your life in terms with your own struggles. If you undermine your struggles, you will seep into depression. But if you think struggles and sufferings teach something, definitely God is with you. Because the God that whom you believe struggled to life. What was his struggle? My father, my father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? This is the experience of the one who pronounced liberation, redemption, and salvation to this world. Don't undermine your suffering. That is the point. Finally, uh, John chapter 1. And I am only going to focus on verse 51. Kindly read chapter 1, verse 51. Vanam Tirandirikiradayum, Devatudayum, Yerigradayum, Ningal, Idamudel, Khan Birgal, Yendra, John's Church is not thinking of Jesus having come from. Mary's ancestry or Joseph's ancestry. For John, there is no beginning to Jesus and there is no end to Jesus. It was in and through Jesus that everything was created, unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke. For Mark, Jesus' beginning is from Galilee. For Matthew and Luke, Jesus' beginning is from Jewish history. But for John, Jesus' beginning 
had no beginnings and Jesus' end is without end. And he is saying these things in the context of Jewish religion and the religion of the empire, the Roman Empire. While saying that he is also saying on one hand there is Jewish history, on the other hand you also have a king who says I am God. But John is saying the one whom you killed had no beginnings and will have no end. And that is why he calls Jesus as the word, Varte. In Jesus' experience, life is something like this. You see the heavens open and you see continuous conversation between the heavens and the earth. In Jacob's experience, there is a ladder. Yaakobum idai pole ori darishinathai parkindran and the darishinathil ori yeni irukirathu. Anna, inge, here you don't see a ladder. There is absolute conversation. Which means in Jesus, all that is in between is torn apart. In Jesus, there is nothing in between. Never you think somebody has to speak for you. Somebody has to pray for you. You have to go to such and such a place to experience such and such a ecstasy. No. In Jesus, heavens and the world have started to relate. You see the angels coming down and the son of man going up. And this process is continuous. Our lives go up. Our lives also come down. But who is the anchor that we hold upon? Jesus is the anchor. Think about your own lives and your own quiet times. How many of us literally say the demon is not out there, the demon is inside me? How many of us are here to courageously say this is my demon and I'm grappling with this demon? Most of us won't. We will only see demons out. John is calling out to his church to relate with the heavens and the earth continuously. Dear friends, let me say another story and I will end this meditation. There was a, a monk, Munivar. He was meditating in silence and he had a king approaching him and the king had completely won over the entire world. Somebody like Alexander. Hmm? The entire world is his, is beneath his sword, is beneath his sword. This particular king comes to the monk and he says, I have conquered the entire world, now I have to conquer heaven. Now you tell me how to conquer heaven. Our spirituality is also like that. We want to conquer heaven. We don't want to experience heaven here and now. The monk is quiet, silent, not responding. The king is furious, angry. He takes his sword and almost striking the monk and he says, Narugam, Narugam, hell. The king does not understand. He puts back his sword and the monk says, heaven. The king is not able to understand this wisdom. Again he takes the sword. He says, hell, hell. He puts the sword and the monk says, heaven, heaven. 
meaning of life for me personally is to realize heaven inside me and around me can i make a heaven for myself and can i make my dwelling place a heaven jesus tried jesus tried and we are called to try heaven here and now let us pray thank you god thank you for this time thank you for the wisdom that was showered upon us we come at everybody at your feet hoping for such wisdom in perceiving life and embracing life and life alone in jesus' most precious name we pray amen all of us who have heard the word of god and have accepted the wisdom of god let us all stand and say the apostles creed together i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ god's only son of the lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the father and he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen let us also say the prayer that our lord jesus taught us our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come you will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever we will have the announcements of the church ಸಮಿತಿಯವರು ಹತ್ತು ಸಾವಿರ ರೂಪಾಯಿಗಳು ಕಟ್ಟಡ ನಿಧಿಗಾಗಿ ನೀಡಿರುತ್ತಾರ
ಸಭೆಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ಹಾಗೂ ಸಭಾಪಾಲ ಸಭೆಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಎ ಹೋಲಿ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಚರ್ಚ್ ಪೀನಿಯಾ ಸಭಾಪಾಲಕರು ಹಾಗೂ ಸಭಾಪಾಲಕ ಸಮಿತಿಯವರು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ಸಾವಿರ ರೂಪಾಯಿಗಳು ಕಟ್ಟಡ ನಿಧಿಗಾಗಿ ನೀಡಿರುತ್ತಾರೆ ಸಭೆಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ಹಾಗೂ ಸಭಾಪಾಲಕ ಪಾಲನಾ ಸಮಿತಿಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಚರ್ಚ್ ಬೈಪನಹಳ್ಳಿ ಸಭಾಪಾಲಕರು ಹಾಗೂ ಸಭಾಪಾಲ ಸಮಿತಿಯವರು ಐದು ಸಾವಿರ ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಕಟ್ಟಡ ನಿಧಿಯಾಗಿ ನೀಡಿರುತ್ತಾರೆ ಸಭೆಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ಹಾಗೂ ಸಭಾಪಾಲ ಸಮಿತಿ ಪರವಾಗಿ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಎ ಹೋಲಿ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಚರ್ಚ್ ಕಾಂಗ್ರಿಗೇಷನ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ನಿಂದ ಐದು ಸಾವಿರದ ನೂರು ರೂಪಾಯಿಗಳು ಕಟ್ಟಡ ನಿಧಿಗಾಗಿ ನೀಡಿರುತ್ತಾರೆ ಸಭೆಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ಹಾಗೂ ಸಭಾಪಾಲ ಸಮಿತಿ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಎ ಶೆಫರ್ ಮೆಮೋರಿಯಲ್ ಚರ್ಚ್ ಸೌತೆಲ್ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಕಾಂಗ್ರಿಗೇಷನ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ನಿಂದ ಲಕೋಟಿ ಮೂಲಕ ಹನ್ನೆರಡು ಸಾವಿರ ಇನ್ನೂರ ಎಂಬತ್ತೆರಡು ರೂಪಾಯಿಗಳು ಕಟ್ಟಡ ನಿಧಿಗಾಗಿ ನೀಡಿರುತ್ತಾರೆ ಸಭೆಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ಹಾಗೂ ಸಭಾಪಾಲ ಸಮಿತಿಯ ಪರವಾಗಿಯೂ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ನವೆಂಬರ್ ಏಳನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಮಹಿಳೆಯರ ಭಾನುವಾರ ಹಾಗೂ ಮರಣ ನಿವಾರಣ ನಿಧಿ ಭಾನುವಾರ ಆಚರಿಸಲ್ಪಡುತ್ತದೆ ಬರುವ ಭಾನ ಭಾನುವಾರ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇವಾಲಯದ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರು ಗುಲಾಬಿ ಬಣ್ಣದ ಉಡುಗೆಗಳನ್ನು ಧರಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಬರಬೇಕಾಗಿ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರನ್ನು ಕಾರ್ಯದರ್ಶಿಗಳು ವಿನಂತಿಸಿಕೊಂಡಿರುತ್ತಾರೆ ದ ಪಿಂಕ್ ಕಲರ್ ಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಕೋಡ್ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಮುಗಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ಗಾಗಿ ಕೂಡಿ ಬರಬೇಕಾಗಿ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರ ಕಾರ್ಯದರ್ಶಿಗಳು ವಿನಂತಿಸಿಕೊಂಡಿರುತ್ತಾರೆ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರ ಅನ್ಯೋನ್ಯ ಕೂಟದ ಸದಸ್ಯತ್ವವನ್ನು ನಮೂದಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವವರು ಎನ್ರೋಲ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅನ್ನು ಪಡೆದು ಮೂವತ್ತು ರೂಪಾಯಿಗಳನ್ನು ಕಟ್ಟಬೇಕೆಂದು ಮಹಿಳೆಯರ ಅನ್ಯೋನ್ಯ ಕೂಟದ ಕಾರ್ಯದರ್ಶಿಯವರು ವಿನಂತಿಸುತ್ತಾರೆ ನವೆಂಬರ್ ಒಂದನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ನಿಂದ ಆರನೇ ತಾರೀಕುವರೆಗೆ ಸಾಯಂಕಾಲ ಐದುವರೆ ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಸ್ಕಿಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮಾಡಲಾಗುತ್ತದೆ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರು ಇಚ್ಛೆ ಇದ್ದವರು ಭಾಗವಹಿಸಬೇಕೆಂದು ವಿನಂತಿಸಿಕೊಂಡಿರುತ್ತಾರೆ ಸಭೆಯವರಿಗೆ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಗಮನಕ್ಕೆ ಯಾರಾದರೂ ಮನೆಗಳು ಬದಲಿಸಿದರೆ ತಮ್ಮ ಬದಲಿಸಿದ ಮನೆಗಳ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ಗಳನ್ನು ಪಿ ಸಿ ಆಫೀಸ್ ಕೇಳಿದ್ದಾಗಲಿ ಅಥವಾ ಚಂದ್ರಗಾಗಲಿ ಕೊಡಬೇಕೆಂದು ವಿನಂತಿಸಿಕೊಂಡಿರುತ್ತೇನೆ ತಮ್ಮ ಕಾಣಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನು ಗೇಟಿನ ಬಲಿಯ ಬಲಿಯದಲ್ಲಿ ರೆಕ್ಕಿನ ಪೆಟ್ಟಿಯನ್ನು ನೀಡಿರುವುದು ದಯಮಾಡಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕಾಣಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನು ಹಾಕುವಂತೆ ವಿನಂತಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತೇನೆ ನಾಳೆ ನವೆಂಬರ್ ಒಂದನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಬೆಳಿಗ್ಗೆ ಆರು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಕರ್ತನ ರಾತ್ರಿ ಭೋಜನ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರದ ಆರಾಧನೆ ನಡೆಸಲ್ಪಡುತ್ತದೆ ಬರುವ ಭಾನುವಾರ ಬೆಳಿಗ್ಗೆ ಎಂಟು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಕರ್ತನ ರಾತ್ರಿ ಭೋಜನ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರದ ಆರಾಧನೆ ನಡೆಸಲ್ಪಡುತ್ತದೆ
Yavangelis Mulam cover Mulam, mind time with Rubai, Arvach cover Mulam, no Rubai, Arthur Pillar, Yalat Mulamaga, Yuru Rubai, Nelet, that's Mulam, I Rubai, Agamatum, Arutna Rati, I Rubai. CSITA, Patano Trisaman Sarbil, Patai Rubai, Patinetika Kurtu Ragar, Yoral Gag and the Tiltafe Gaganam, Anevam, Javatri, Yeru Kuyan Baikat, to go to the Bali River. CSITA, Holy Cross Church, Tiltafan Sarbil, Yerothendaram, Patinetika Kurtu Ragar, in the Tiltafe Gaganam, Anevam, Javatri, Yeru Kuyan Baikat, to go to the Bali River. CSATA by a participant's army, cut it in the Kaga, either I go back for two lagrin, but a Savia and Tiltable in the Tilisavia and Ever Kaun or Manevum, Kratan Hire, Yana Nebri and Baker to put a pretty CSA Wordy Class Tilsaven Sarbil Cover Muram, either the Nur by Portu Lager, Ural Kernum Tilsaven Sarbilum. Paribaran to Saradum in ninety eight till two million. CSATA, Shepherd, Memory Tilsaven, Complication Cover Molamaga, Panada, the Yeru Tender Trend by Kurtu Lager, in the Tilsaven Kagum, number Tilsaven Sardum, Paribaran to Saradum in ninety eight till two million. Kai Margar, Paragara, Nayan, Ansarika Pogitagar, Paragara, Nayan.
before we could check, before we could uh, see the choreography from our young people. Let us hear to the bands of the marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between Preeti Shah, daughter of E. Samraj and S. Shashikala, member of David Memorial Church, Bangalore, with Karthik VP, son of Praveen Nambiar and Shailaja, members of AG Worship House, Halasuru, Bangalore. If anyone knows any just cause as to why they should not be joined together in holy matrimony, the same may be communicated in writing to the presbyter in charge of David Memorial Church, Bangalore. This is the second announcement. Let us pray. Thank you, God. For the gift of life and gift of life we receive in and through the holy matrimony. At this time we thank you for the life of Pratisha and Karthik. As they plan ahead to experience the holy matrimony, bless them as you have blessed them so far. Bless them in their preparations, bless their families as they prepare and work towards the holy matrimony. Let none of their hard work go in vain. Bless them as they come together in your name. We commit both the families at your feet, hoping that you will bless them through in this life. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will have the choreography from uh, our young people followed by the youth report. Bundle up in this box. 
I requested to finally, I request the youth committee members to just finally come up and present this. As usual, you have forgotten. Go ahead with your report.
Thank you, dear Mohini Church. We have a